Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at something called a deployment, which is yet another type of resource in Kubernetes. So if you keep in track, we have the pod, which was the first type of resource we looked at. Then we look at replica set, and now we're going to look at a deployment. So what exactly is a deployment? Well, for that, we're going to go directly to the documentation and read what it says. Okay, so let's take a look at what it says about deployments. So we left off here on the replica, and if you look in the side menu here to the left, you'll see that just above it is deployment. And so if we click on deployment, We'll see that it says a deployment provides declarative updates for pods and replica sets. So it actually mentioned replica sets. Um, it says you describe a desired state in a deployment and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at a control rate. Now we're going to see this not today, but in a future version. We actually might see a little bit of it today. You can define deployments to create new replicas or to remove existing deployments and adapt all of their resources with new deployment. Well, don't focus on the last part, really. The important thing is you can define deployments to create new replicas. So just like how we have replica sets that can create multiple parts, here we've seen that deployments can manage multiple replica sets, multiple replica sets. So why would you want a deployment? That's the real thing here, right? Because it seems as though, like it says, deployment can update and create pods. Well, that's what a replica set does. So why would you want a deployment and not just stick with a replica set? And as we saw, replica sets are pretty awesome. They heal the pod if you know one goes down or something. So here are the use cases. The following are typical use cases for deployments. The replica set, so you can create a deployment to roll out a replica set. The replica set creates the pod in the background, checks the status of the rollout to see if it, success, it succeeds or not. Declare the new state of the pod by updating the pod's template, which again, we know from a replica set, there's a specification in the replica set for the pod. So the deployment is going to have the same thing and you know of the deployment. So the deployment have a pod specification. And then a new replica set is created and the deployment manages moving the pods from the old replica set to the new one. Now, this is really cool. And you're gonna see a little bit of that today. But what this tells you is that, imagine that within the deployment, we change the pod specification for some image, for example. Because the deployment can create new replica, it could create another, a new replica with that new image and then start migrating the pods over. And sometimes I'm gonna say migrate, not physically move them, but really just spin down or terminate pods in the old replica set and then start increasing them in the new one. And so this allows you to do things like roll out going from one version to another version smoothly. And we'll kind of see a little bit of that, but more to come. And of course, here's the thing, roll back to an earlier deployment version. Again, deployment is keeping track of all these changes. And so you can roll back to some point if you happen to specify a change to your deployment that resulted in a new replica set because you changed the image or something that's being rolled out and that image had a bug or something you can easily go back to a previous one so it allows you to manage that sort of thing very easily um, you can scale up the deployment to facilitate more load which is what our replica also did right we said hey we wanted more pods and we got them well, you could tell the deployment to do the same thing. I want more replicas, and those replicas really refer to the pods because remember, the deployment is managing the replica sets. So it could tell the replica set, hey, I need more, more pods. You can pause the rollout of a deployment, fix an issue, and roll it back. So there are a lot of things here, a lot of use cases why you might want to use a deployment. I'm not going to read through all of it. I want to make this video kind of short, but I just wanted to show you how a deployment is sort of different than a replica set. The deployment is the thing above the replica set, just like how the replica set is the thing above the pod, right? And the pod is the thing above containers, right? It's like a layer cake thing that we got going on here. So now we've read that and do feel free to read it for yourself and you absolutely should. We're gonna go now to playing around with deployment. But before we do, 
I want to be able to get my Kubernetes dashboard up and you know mine has an error here because it's no longer running, but I want to show you. So if you remember when we talk about how to deploy the Kubernetes dashboard, I said that you can go to this page and it's essentially on the Kubernetes website on the documentation and then on the task. And then on the task, you can go to access application in your cluster and deploy and access the Kubernetes dashboard. And it shows you this picture. And then there's this link here that says, you know, you can run this Kubernetes apply command. So I'm going to copy that to run it. But before running it, what I'm going to do is if I go to my cluster here and let's just go at the command line here. I says kubectl proxy. If you remember, we run this command and it opened up the proxy is basically a link, um, a port from our local machine to the Kubernetes cluster. And if I try to go to this link, so I'll refresh, you'll see that all I have are all the endpoints that I can call on that my Kubernetes um, API server. And so, you know, if you have API, that, that, that. Now, once I start typing this, you can see that the Kubernetes dashboard is actually at API version one, which is this guy, and blah, blah, blah. You know, Kubernetes, the name of the namespace, the service within it, and the Kubernetes dashboard. Of course, this is not going to work when I do this, see that's failure. And that is because I haven't run this command yet. So let's copy this and run this command. So I'll go back here and Control C, and I'm going to paste this and run this. So this is what's going to install the Kubernetes dashboard. It does a whole bunch of things for me. Uh, you can see it creates the Kubernetes na uh, dashboard namespace and so on and so on. If I go back now and I refresh this link, you're going to see it goes directly to wanting me to log in because it said my token has expired. So we show, showed this already. And so now we have to get a token. And remember, to get a token, we have to create a user. And then, of course, I already run this kubectl proxy command already, port, but we still need to create the user. And if you remember, I said that I took these commands, you can put these, these uh, configuration into a file, which it tells you, and run the apply. So I put it in one file. And so let me show you that file again. So I'm going to do bat because my bat command will show you kind of nicely. And so this is what it looks like, right? You can see this fourth part is what is exactly here. And then this bottom piece is what's here. Okay, so now that I have that in one file, now I can do kubectl apply minus f and admin user. I think my, I call my file, file dashboard dash admin user. And it created the admin user. Now why I need to create an admin user? Because I need to get the token for that user so I can then use it to log in. So if I copy this and I run this command to get the token, you'll see I get this token and I copy this. Now I can show you this because you don't have access to my cluster. You can only log in locally and I destroy this cluster if I create them. So I go back to the dashboard interface, I paste the token in and then I click sign in. And there you go. And you're in. And so I can leave that on the workloads, um, workloads page. And that's it. That's how you get your Kubernetes dashboard. Now, if you get an error about, you know, you do this create token, essentially it says, oh, you can only use minus H or minus K or minus F, something crazy like that. Basically, what it means is that your kubectl command is not version 1.24 and above. So if I do version, you can see that my kubectl command is version 1.24.1. And so what you need to do, if you use brew or whatever you use to install uh, your kubectl, just install the latest one, okay? And mine, I already did this before, so mine was 1.23, that's something, and I was having that issue, but once I install the updated um, kubectl command, it's working. So you need to have version 1.24. All right, so make sure you do that. All right, so now that's up. So let's go and now um, see about creating deployments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my proxy here running because I want to, of course, access my dashboard. So I'm going to just zoom in to this part. And 
if you remember the last time we created a directory where we had a pod and our replica set and that was in section 426.8 so i'm going to copy minus r i'm going to do 026.08 and that was replica set and i want to call it so section 9 and it's k8s dash deployment copy that and then i'm going to code so of course cd into deployment oh as a matter of fact i should call it deployments part one because there are going to be several parts to this one so i'm going to name this the 09.01 that's sort of been my naming convention i've been trying to do like a proper naming convention okay so now i'm in that directory and now i can do this so with my vs code open as you can see well, like i said before we had our pod and then we had our replica set and we, we looked at all that and what that's supposed to look like and everything all right so what does a deployment look like so we talk about what a deployment is and now we want to see how to create one so just as before when i copied a pod and modify it i'll do the same thing here i'll copy a replica and then paste that and call it deploy event i guess that yaml and let's just compare these two keep them open side by side then i'm going to close this and so we know that our api version this is going to be app slash version one and for our deployment so the, the replica set is on the left and the deployment is on the right i can see that up there so over here i want to change my deployment so i'm going to say this is a deployment well i don't want anything else it was going to insert a whole bunch of defaults for me so i didn't want that and so now you can see my deployment file here is updated so that give me confidence that it is my deployment file that's been updated and of course on the metadata we can give our deployment a name we'll call it my stack and label we can leave the same labels and all this other stuff then we could have multiple of those and then this spec on the spec this is the specification for deployment itself again deployment managed replication so replication of your pod so we're saying we want three replicas and the selectors how to find the thing that it needs to manage so that's going to be for the pod or the um the replica set and so of course the deployment creates replica set with all the details and it needs to be able to create that replica set with the pod specification so here's that pod specification just like the on the template just like the deployment and the replica set that had and notice the only thing that's different between the two is just the kind same exact information so how you specify them it's essentially the same so now that i have that in place let me go to the command line and so now cube ctl apply minus f and i do deployment and notice keep your eyes when i press enter to create the deployment keep your eyes on what's going to happen on my workload here in my cluster and so i press enter and it says created and it's pretty soon we should see a one deployment was created which makes sense and there's the name of the deployment my stack and the images are these two image files as you can see these two sorry images nginx and redis and then you can see the labels app stuff owner blah 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 and it tells you how many pods are in that deployment and look like we could scroll over a little bit and it tells you you know when it was created plus there's some other information you could probably do the drop down but then look at the pods those are the three pods the names are derived from the deployment and with these are weird names so it's the deployment name the replica set name and then the unique name for each pod and how do I know that? Because if I scroll down, you can see the mm -hmm. replica set name is essentially the name of the deployment and some unique value here. And you can see that value is being re reused for all the pods that were created by that deployment. And that's it. We got everything we needed from that deployment. Now, one of the things I mentioned is that through the deployment, you can still manage multiple pods and we can see that here we have three we can change that to two 
and we can go back to our command line wait to our file save and do apply and we can see that our this is going to change pretty soon to two there the same exact deploy replica set was updated and it was changed to two and the number of pods running reduced to two right you can see that here you have fewer pods running now one of the things I mentioned was how you can do rollback or you can see the migration of pods between different replica sets because I said the deployment can manage multiple replica sets. So let's see that. Let's say we wanted to change here our Nginx to run version 1.4.0, for example, 1.14.0. And um, I'm not going to change the number of replicas, not that that matters, matters anyway. But now I'm going to go back and I'm going to apply. And then what you're going to see happen is notice how here we have a new replica set, totally different number, um, representing Nginx 1 at 14 at 0. And notice we have part 1 of 2. And so that's where the migration of parts is talking about as it scale up or create the pods in this new replica set it scaled down the ones in the older ones so you can imagine if this was new version of software you're rolling out that you'd still be able to have uptime you basically have some of the older application the old application running in those pods and then the new one coming online and once you have all the new ones online or as you bring up new ones you start scaling down the older ones so it's a nice seamless rollover from old to new. Some people might know this as blue-green uh, rollout, right, or deployment. So um, this is really, really clever. And let's say we wanted to do yet another version, let's say version 2, 1.14.2 of Nginx. And so we go back, let's clean up, and let's apply. And we should see the same thing happen. We should see eventually we'll have a new replica set because this is a new version of image. And that's exactly what happened. And now you see the pods being scaled up over here. We want two of them eventually, but it's being scaled up. And then this one is being scaled down. And so even though you can see that these are still green, those older um, replica set, not older, but the other replica set that have zero pods in them, they're green and they're shown as running, but they won't, they're not running any pods. And so that's why we still have one deployment or one and only deployment. It hasn't changed, that's the name of it. And we have two pods now. Notice we have three replica sets running. But even though, like I said, the replica sets are running, in quotes, air quotes, notice that all, there are no pods associated with them. And if we keep this on screen, as you can see the migration happening, let's just migrate back to version one, for example. And you know, too many screens to keep track of here. So I'm going to change this on a configuration. I'll clean up my screen. And then now let's look. I enter the command here to fix the deployment. And look what happened. Temporarily, we have like three pods running, right? We have one pending, then two of this. And as you can see, it's going to st slowly start changing things. And it, it fix it quickly, right? And so we know down to two pods. That's because in that transition period, it was sort of rolling over. So it added one new pod. It has still had two the older version, one that for one that 14 that two. And then once our we had a green on the one that one that one, there's a lot of information, it removed one of the one that 14 that two. Then it created a second one that 14 that one, because that's what we need, two of those. And then it removed one that's green, it removed the other one. So yeah, so it's managing all this seamlessly for us. And you can see it went back to that previous replica set because it was already there, it had the replica set. That had the version 1.14.1 so it didn't need to create a new replica set it just needs to change it modify its number of replica from zero to two and that's what it's doing it's behind the scene managing multiple versions of a replica set now just to summarize like the last time i showed something like this so so far we have a node a kubernetes node and we know what happens on a node it's a node is where you have some kind of container runtime um, service and it runs containers. Then we learn that our pods are used by Kubernetes to manage one or more containers that could be running on you know, one or more nodes. 
And then we learned about a replication set that managed replication of one or more pods. And we saw that that was easier to do than us trying to create, you know, modify our pod configuration file to give it a different name because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get a different pod. But with a replica set, it creates name for those pods and it can manage them and scale them up and scale them down. And then we saw a deployment is something that manages multiple versions of a replica set or multiple replica sets. Now I say versions because we can see that when we have multiple, we make changes to the images that are in the pod. Well, there's a different replica set that is being created and they're all being tracked. We can roll back and forth between them. We haven't quite seen roll back from the command line, but we saw that if we change something in the deployment description for those um, for the pod specification that it actually goes back to a replica set that matches that description. So it is keeping track of multiple versions of a replica set and we see that. Now this is only part one of deployment. So we're going to come back and we can see some other benefit like doing, being able to do rollout and rollback um, as mentioned as one of the features of deployments. We're going to see that in future videos. With that said, I think this is enough for this video. Um, if you made it this far, please con and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you, appreciate it. And if you have questions or comments, please pose them in the video before. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. That's gonna do me a nice solid and try to get other people to see the video. Leave comments and take care, stay safe, and see you in the next video. Bye.